Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Comic Book Showcase. Today we're going to be talking about the end of the New 52 over at DC. DC has just announced a number of changes coming up this summer, specifically in June. Uh, 24 new issues of uh, number one numbered issues are going to be coming out. Uh, however, that's not to say they're, they're nuking the entire universe as they've done before. Uh, there will still be a number of titles uh, carrying on from uh, from the current uh, numbers numbering scheme. So um, I'd like to you know toss it over to Rab. Why don't you tell us a little bit, uh, Rab, about what's going on, what was in the announcement, what you expect to see, and what you think is going to be interesting? Wow. Um, I guess what's going on is that all for the last year or so, everything has been building up to this event called Convergence, and it's supposed to be like. If this month, I guess, it's going to be a bunch of different timelines from across DC history with all of the events. It's like the anniversary of the Crisis on Infinite Earths from 1985, and that's going to be a big deal. And I suspect that coming out of it, like this is what the announcement's about, coming out of Convergence, we're going to have some kind of situation where continuity doesn't matter as much to DC as it has in the past. I'm not sure what that means. It's kind of scary for me. But uh, I think <laughs> I've heard things like that it's going to be the, the continuity that we've just got in the new 52 is not being thrown out the window. It's just that they're going to be less grippy about it. They're going to hold less tightly to things like Batman can't sit down or things like that. Do you, do you think anything this has to do with Grant Morrison's multiversity at all? I, I don't think so. Personally, I don't think so. Uh, I think I think it's just a, a, a convenient convergence that it's happening right now at this time. And I read an interview with Dan DiDio recently where he said essentially that it just happened that way and so I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's anything to do with that. What we're going into, but it's gonna be a wild ride. It almost know. seems like they didn't like know what to do with Fifty Two anymore. That they are like coming to the end of the rope with that one and been like, uh, what were we gonna do with this? How were we gonna end it? Like it just. It seemed to just be, like that was kind of like dwindling off, dying a very slow death, and they needed to do something. Yeah, it wasn't really a, a new 52 anymore, or it hadn't been for, like, at least a year. I mean, it's been, what, three, four years since the new 52 started up? It's been a while. And, I mean, they, they, it had a good long run, you know. Well, Can't I, be the I, new 52 forever. I'd argue long is somewhat subjective. I mean, they ran the first universe for 70 years plus. Well, <laughs> well just the... the uh, the fact that they had the branding, that they were branding things as New 52 for, yeah. like, three or four years. Yeah, I don't think the branding matters so much. Like, we we treat the New 52 like it's the name of the universe or something, but it's not really... It's just the, hey, everybody, we got 52 new books out. They're the New 52. But now it's going to be 49 books or something. But it doesn't matter. Like, it's just... Starting in September of 2011, right? September 2011, it was... Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the New 52. Starting in September of 2011, it was like, here's a bunch of new books, here's new-ish continuity, and that's what we're getting. And I don't think when they say the New 52 is ever over that they're saying continuity is over. They're saying, we're just going to take that off the front of the books now. Well, it seems like when they say that uh, they're trying to make less continuity-focused stories, that they don't mean that they're getting rid of the current continuity so much as just trying to have stories be more self-contained and accessible to newer readers. Where uh, That's a model that's been working a lot for Marvel lately, whereas in the past, like 10 years ago, Marvel books were hopelessly intertwined. Trying to read through a single Marvel book, you got to do pages and pages of back research. He's reading Silver Age Fantastic Four anytime I try to track my way through anything. And, and even in the New 52, you have all of this like, oh, you like it to understand this story, learn more about Superman's gluten allergy in Action Comics number 32. And that, it's, it's nice that the idea that they're going to be trying to write stories that people can just pick up on the shelves and enjoy 
without needing a fucking, like, master's degree in super bullshit. Or some sort of database of some kind. Yeah, I, I dream of a world... I dream of a world where databases like that, whatever you're describing, are <laughs> obsolete. So do we, do we think that this is actually going to uh, lead to another uh, method of distribution? Like, if you remember back in the day, and I mean, we're all relatively young compared to the comic book industry, but they actually, comics used to actually be sold on newsstands, and in, like, the, equivalent, the then equivalent of Walmart, you would just go in, and it would be right beside the GQ magazine, but they don't do that anymore because of, you know, Diamond Distribution's, you know, uh, model. Basically, there's comic book stores, and then there's comic book conventions, and that's the two places you can get them. Do we think that this sort of idea that you can just pick up a single issue and have it read like somewhat like a novel where at the beginning there's the beginning of the story and at the end you're done reading. Do you think that lends itself to being sold on store shelves again? I hope that we can just get that with the collected editions with the graphic novels, trade paperbacks because even those, you go to the store and you have all this like JSA Volume 7 where they fight Mordru, the bad guy from Amethyst, Princess of Gem World, and the Legion of Superheroes. You, it's it's impossible to dissect even the things that come out in the big uh, manageable things. So I'm hoping we get a push for those to be uh, more readable. It always bothers me in uh, collected like trade paperbacks where you get like the first issue of it seems like the beginning of a story, but then there's some reference to something totally weird that you can't. You don't know anything about, and then you get to the end, and it's like we're getting right into the next story. So just wait till the next one comes out, because they don't separate them in the way that they used to. Like they're still using, or they're using the like the A story and B story model, like uh, Paul Levitz used to use, where they overlap each other, and then you end up like with the end of your your trade paperback is like just the beginning of the next one, and you you have to wait a month for that to come out, but that works better in some respects. I think Billy and I have talked about this a lot where we think, or I don't know if I think it necessarily, but like it would work better in the long run to have a, you have a trade paperback only. Like the monthly thing kind of drags on. Like the monthly one issue, 20 page thing kind of drags on and the story, you forget what happened in the last issue because it's been a month. So if you well, have all six the, issues to read in a row. And they have also tried that model with the uh, the DC's Earth One line, which is published entirely through graphic novels. And it seems like they've had a lot of success with, with that. I'd be interested to see if they end up doing more things with that format. Yeah, and we do have to obviously keep in mind that DC and Marvel are companies, businesses in, in you know, um, to make money and uh, the sort of the perpetual hook, the, oh, you have to get the next issue and then, of course, the as, as you were describing earlier, the threaded model where you have the mainstream story and Marvel's got theirs coming up this, uh, this summer called, or this September, I think, called um, uh, Secret Wars and the idea is that there's a main story and maybe it's only 10 issues long, but there's all these side stories that you have to go pick up She-Hulk number 17 or whatever it is to sort of follow the full story. They're in the business to make money, and, and if they make everything completely compartmentalized, they you know, they run the risk of, of not getting that follow-on sale. Um, so, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they balance that. That's uh, just uh, building on Rap, what Rap was saying. Yeah, it feels like every trade paperback, the whole thing is like, oh, we, the ending is always, we finally defeated General Zod. Jimmy Olsen choked to death on a hamburger, and then that, that's the ending to every single one of those books. <laughs> yeah, I think, but to tie it in with something Jamie was saying about how do the books, like, lend themselves to being one-shot, sort of one-and-done stories? Like, will they? in this new continuity free environment i don't think so i think i think right now in the world we live in we're really geared towards like marathon tv or continuous serial storytelling just like in comic books because the people who make tv right now are comic book fans i think and in movies like the way that the marvel cinematic universe is becoming a universe rather than just a bunch of separate one-and-done movies is 
a sign of the way that we prefer our stories to be, like something we can that has it has a backstory and continues forward in time, I guess. And I think we'll still want to read like a story that has continuity. Like continuity is really what a lot of comic book fans are in it for, I think. Not I mean the stories, yes, but also the continuity. But I think Yeah. That, I think and uh sorry, Justice. Uh, just, no, no, no. Um, I think that, and now I'm getting into sort of a semantic area. That kind of uh, that kind of universe building stuff, where you get the feeling that something is inhabiting a much larger larger world, is a lot of the reason why we love comic books so much, and why we fans who are really really into it like hunger for that shit. And I think, and now this is the part I'm getting into a semantic difference. To me, I feel like it's the difference between when I'm reading through a series. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, I have to read, I have to go back and read every issue of Agents of Atlas so I understand this. That I hate. What I love is when I read a story and I'm like, oh my god, this is so cool. I gotta check out these Agents of Atlas guys who I didn't know anything about before. And to me, it's just like that little, it's, oh, I have to versus, oh, I get to. That's the DC's, DC's been doing that for the last couple of, like, Major major storylines that really pissed me off because I'd be like going through and like reading like Flashpoint or whatever, and then you have to like um, figure out what the hell off you got to read. Okay, I got to read this stuff about the robes because there's some crucial plot point because now all of a sudden Captain Cold just showed up and he's done some fantastic shit over there, but now I got to go find all those books to read it. And it's a real pain in the ass, and I'd like to see them like I'd like to see what they're gonna do with this and how they're gonna play it out because I can't see them going completely away from continuity, because they need to have that one kind of story arc that reads us through, but, like, a lot of those other books can have things that have nothing to do with anything else that's going on at the time, and you don't have to worry about it, and you just get, like, a four- or five-story arc, and it's just beautiful. I, I totally agree. Justice, what do you think? Um, I gotta say, I, I think there's... there's definitely a balance to be had there. Like, ever, continuity's... Great knowledge of continuity, but uh, what you call it is should be acceptable. There's two things I'm thinking of particularly. Uh, first, one of my favorite books coming out, Mark Wade's Daredevil. Like, that's a book that could not happen without the previous 40, 50 odd years of Daredevil history, and it builds off that. But it's also entirely self-contained. You don't need to know who any of these people are going in. Like, it helps to know who Matt Murdock is, what his deal is. But you get everything you need to just from book to book. But my so that's sort of like a thing I think people should you know live up to. But you know Mark Wade, he's pretty fucking great. You can't always live up to Mark Wade. Um, the other thing is with major events. Uh, did you guys read Original Sin and some of the tie-ins last year? The all those tie-ins. The main story, but not too many of the tie-ins. I really liked how they handled their tie-ins because, like, at a point in the main book, uh, the orb, who has an eye for a head, he's pretty great, uh, like, blows up the Watcher's eye and a bunch of secrets get revealed. And then everyone goes, oh, my God, this person didn't tell me that thing. And then everyone just goes off to their own books and deals with their own storylines, almost (laughs) entirely unrelated, that couldn't have really happened without some weird eye explosion. So, it it's not about tying in the main story to each individual book. It's about spinning off stories from the tie-in. It's about seeing where that goes. Spider-Verse is also really good about this, because it's like every Spider-Man ever. There's the main book where they're fighting the main bad guys, but then there's also all these other side books where they go off and they team up with steampunk lady Spider-Man, or there's, like, sixth grade spider, spider Girl, and, like, crazy Spider-Punk in a world where Norman Osborn has taken over and he's got an electric guitar and fighting an army of Venoms, and it's fucking awesome. Like, so, I think, like, I, I appreciate what DC is doing with the less continuity thing, but, man, there's so much good continuity, though. Like, you can't, I don't know. I don't know. To, to be clear, though, um, I don't think they're saying continuity-free, because, uh, Rab, you no, said no, 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 continuity-free, but uh, I think it was Rab that said that, but it's it's um, it's less. It's less focused. It's it's less important. 
Uh, the, not everything's going to be part of a yeah. continuity, just as, as Billy was saying, it's m yeah. more encapsulated. That's that's the only thing. So, Rab, uh, uh, why don't you, I'm going to toss it over to Rab to, to sort of wrap us up, and then we're, we are running a little bit out of time here. So, uh, Rab, final thoughts. I think what I... When I was talking about what we love about continuity, I don't think I wasn't necessarily saying continuity between books, like of the DC universe. I meant continuity in terms of like Batman did this ten years ago, or like the history of each character needs to retain some of its. I mean, they can retcon things if they want, but I mean the history of the character needs to remain true to each character, and I think. They still intend to do that, and I think that's going to work out for them as long as they stay true to the characters that they have had for like 70 years. It's going to be still the same stuff that we like reading, just maybe not quite so heavily intertwined, and that'll be okay. I would yeah. love to see them just fuck with the continuity for long-term characters just for a year, see how everybody feels. Be like, I would feel like punching you in the face. Oh, it'd be priceless. <laughs> Fanboys would crap themselves. It would be fantastic. <laughs> Have Batman like standing on a rooftop, like that is just a, just a lesson I learned a long time ago when I was a teenage prostitute on the streets of the East End. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And on that note, I think we're going to wrap this episode up. So we're going to pose this question to uh, to our audience. What, uh, without looking, if you haven't already, uh, which books do you would you like to see carry over uh, in the post fifty two uh, you know world of DC, and which books would you like to see end or come back as a new number one with a, a new take? So let us know in the comments. But uh, we're excited to hear what you guys have to think. Uh, thank you very so much for joining us. Uh, we've got Justice Mike, Rab, Billy, and my name is Jamie. Thanks so much for joining us. And that's a wrap for another episode of the Comic Book Showcase. Join us again live via chat or Twitter next week. Like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And to learn more about today's topics, check out the Marvel and DC databases on Wikia, the ultimate resources for comic book information anywhere.